Excel has a beautiful and powerful function that you may have never heard of. It's called frequency. It, it might be the function you have been waiting for for years. It calculates how often certain values in certain categories occur in your data. Let, let's use a very simple situation. You throw a die 30 times. I did that in column A. I mimicked that situation. And I said you can have one eye, two eyes, up to six eyes. I mimicked that situation. I simulated it. Then I calculated how often did I get one eye, six eyes, and these were the values I found the last time I did this simulation. So let's play that game once again, and we are going to do it from scratch. We put in F1 the function rand between. Rand between is a random number generator, and you determine that you want a number between 1 and 6 randomly. And you copy that formula down, 30 rows down, and you got these values. Each time you press Shift F9, you are rolling those dice again, randomly. We are going to calculate how often did we find a 1. If 1 eyes, 2 eyes, we select that pattern and copy it down to 6 eyes. And we calculate the frequencies. In order to do so, I need the frequency function. The frequency function is what they call an array function, a multi-cell array function. It returns multiple cells, multiple values, like in this case 13, 1, 2, etc. So I have to select multiple cells. I would recommend that you select one more cell in case there are numbers above 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They go into this category. Call the frequency function. You can do that from fx in front of the formula bar, or you just type the frequency function. From f1, control shift arrow 1 through f30, comma, in the bins 1, which is h2, control shift arrow down through h7, close your frequency function, and now the important trick. This is a multi-cell array function. So in order to make it an array function, I have to use control shift enter. You hold the control and the shift key at the same time and press enter. And it gives you multiple results. Each time you press F9, you get a new simulation, new results. Okay. And notice that the extra bin is empty because there is no number over 6. Rand between took care of that. But if you would ever type in F17, it would automatically fill that range. Let me just play that for a moment. I type 7 in there and notice that that extra bin gets filled by one element. Why is frequency so important? Each time you want to create plots like these two, you need frequency functions because these are based on frequencies. I put in column A income of 30 people, yearly income, and I calculated how many people did I have up to 60,000, between 60 and 70,000, etc., up to 120,000, over 120,000 is the garbage can. I found 9 up to 60,000. So my chart shows that the highest level is at the low incomes, and gradually that curve goes down. When I click on the curve, you notice that it's based on these categories. They are on the horizontal axis, and the frequencies are plotted on the y-axis. A similar story for the second curve. It's based on these frequencies, and they take their values from column F, where I have certain values, and they have more or less a normal distribution pattern. That means in the center I find the most cases and more to the tails, fewer and fewer cases. Notice again 
that you can only do this if you use the frequency functions, otherwise you can never create these so-called histograms. There are a few things you need to know though about array functions like frequency. The first one is the following. If you ever create a frequency function in here, and I did that already, and you want to delete a certain bin or you want to change the number of rows, you cannot do so. If I elect, select those two and I delete them and I move the cells up, it will tell me you cannot change part of an array. That is a protection of your array function, but it can also be a nuisance. But it's very understandable that you can't do it. If you want to do it, then what do you have to do? You have to select the entire array formula, click in the formula bar, and just accept it with control enter. Now you can do your work, you can remove things, for it's not an array formula anymore. But at the end, you highlight your new array, click in the formula bar, control shift enter. Notice it automatically entered braces for you. You do not type them. They come automatically with control shift enter. And that protects the entire range from deletions or additions or whatever. But they will recalculate each time something changes in column A. The second issue is the following. Someone created a beautiful frequency function in cell F12, but forgot to highlight the entire range, so they get only one answer. In order to fix that problem, you correct your error and say I want this whole range to be filled with that array function. All you need to do is go to the formula bar, click at the end and do Control shift enter and it will still implement the array function. In the third situation, someone made another mistake. They did highlight the entire range, but you guess it, they forgot to implement it with Control Shift Enter. They did Enter or Control Enter or whatever, but not Control Shift Enter. Can you still correct it? Of course, you know by now what to do. You go to the formula bar and you do Control shift enter you have to make sure that that works properly otherwise you get the wrong answers you don't get error messages it just does a completely different job and this is what you should have done you may also want to know that you can do more manipulations on the frequency function say in this section you want the frequency functions but now with a percentage return so it gives you how the, per the percentage of people that make an income up to 60,000. So it's definitely a function that includes the frequency function. Your data array is clear from A1, control shift arrow down through A30, comma. Your bins array is very clear, A12, E12, control shift arrow down through E18. Close your frequency function and delete this by the number of cases we have. You could type 30, but tomorrow you may add a few values in column A. So let us use a function that finds out how many values we have in column A. That is the count function. Starting at A1, control shift arrow down for A30. Because frequency is an array function, I have to accept that the count is not. But I still have to accept this formula with Control Shift Enter. And it gives me the percentages of all these yearly incomes. Then there is one more kind of manipulation that you may want to do. You may want a horizontal output. So instead of making a vertical list like this, you want a horizontal one. How can you make this a horizontal list? You copy it. You probably know that step. You go to the spot where you want your horizontal list and you use home paste paste special transpose and OK it. That was a transpose tool. I did that transposing already for you here, but now I would like to put my frequency array 
plotted here. By default, the array function frequency always plots things vertically. So I have to use a transpose operation on the frequency results. Fortunately, there is also a transpose function, not a tool, but a function. It is, of course, an array function. It needs multiple cells to give its results. And we are going to do that in the highlighted range. So we start the formula with the function transpose. Transpose says, what is the array you want to transpose? And I will do that for you. The frequency function is going to return that array for us. The data array is a1, control shift, arrow down, comma. The bins array is now the horizontal array. C26, control shift, arrow to the right, through I26, close your frequency function and close your transpose function. And do not forget to accept or implement this function with control shift enter. And you will see it gives us exactly the same result as the vertical one did. There are many more functions in Excel that are very important for your work and you may not be aware of all of them. Maybe not even most of them. So I developed a few tools for you to learn much more about functions and scientific work etc. Two CDs, two books. Excel 2007 for experts CD is for all Excel users from very basic to more advanced. Excel for scientists is for specific users in the scientific area. So it goes also into uh, very explicit regression analysis, statistical analysis, curve fitting and that kind of issues. I did something similar in the book Excel 2013 of Scientists, that's the book version of the CD-ROM version. And I also wrote a book called Excel Simulations. It's, it discusses and creates all kinds of simulations in all kinds of areas. Uh, the one I did in this video was basically in the gaming area, creating simulations for dice and that kind of things. But there are many more. You can do them in genetics, in financial applications, etc. Where do you find these tools? MrExcel.com, Amazon.com. Just type my name, Gerard Verschuren, and you will find these tools and many other others I developed for users like you. I wish you good luck.